Oh, it's just too easy now for Jinu. Let's go. <laughs> what are we doing here? The island, maybe? Choi. Choi is also a really interesting character. The same dream. Ooh, this is very exciting too. So much going on in the show right now. All right, solo leveling episode 11. To my understanding, this is the penultimate episode of this first part of season one with another 12, maybe 13 episodes to air later this year. So I'm kind of expecting maybe some big things to happen in these last two episodes here. I'm gonna keep this intro brief, but I'm just gonna make sure I have, you know, the main things going on in the show fresh in my mind. There's actually a lot going Going on in the show right now so there's obviously Jinu's continuous leveling up with the system and getting stronger getting new skills and Jinu continuing to do raids with Jinho and Jinho's father making his own guild and trying to recruit S ranks Choi preparing to raid Jeju Island Dong Su the S rank hunter who was after Jinu and Jinho the S rank dungeon with the demon castle and the elixir of life in it that Jinu is trying to train for and of course the main thing which I imagine we are going to address in this episode is the job change quest that Jinu got last episode so that's where we're at. I highly doubt we're covering all of that over these next two episodes, but I think those are all of the big things I want to have in the front of my mind. There's a lot of other little things as well, but these are the things I want to be ready for if they do address them. Real quick before the episode starts here, if you guys are enjoying these solo leveling videos, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more. And consider checking out the Patreon. Currently, I have early access videos available for Avatar The Last Airbender. Early access for Hunter Hunter is coming soon as well. So if that's something you're interested in, the link is in the description below. With all that being said, enjoy the video. Oh, he hasn't accepted it yet. Okay. So he's level 40. That's the level he needed. He's re he really thinks it through though. Here we go. Okay. Dungeon time. Ooh, I like that. Oh, this one's epic as well, man. Just like the Hell's Castle dungeon. Oh my god, look at this. Oh, yeah. Oh, does that mean he doesn't have a full recovery then? The real game starts here. Ooh, he's pretty optimistic, man, and he's very inquisitive. Ooh, I like it, I like it, I like it. Is that the boss, maybe? Can we shout out Hiroyuki Sawano, by the way? He did so much of the music in Attack on Titan, and so much of it was absolutely fantastic and so iconic, and he has absolutely nailed this opening and Dark Aria, which was the song that played over that uh, the Hunter scene in Episode 6. So far, soundtrack, pretty much a 10 out of 10 for me. Is that Jin Ho and his father? Okay, let's talk. This was the guy scouting for S ranks, right? Jin Song. Oh, his bro oh, this is the brother. Okay. So his brother hasn't awakened powers, I believe. Potion. Oh, okay. Oh, it's one of these. Oh, yeah. This is a dungeon dungeon. Oh, yeah. Dude, that's so. It's still so sick how he pulls the dagger out. Okay. This is the a knight. Okay. So it was orange, right? That means it's like equal footing. How'd we do? Even? Hmm. Ooh. He was a bit shook by that. Yeah, it's not going to work on armor. What do we have to do then? I imagine the poison doesn't work either. True, true. Just your raw strength. Nice, 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 nice. I like that. Ugh. I don't like that. Ah, so it was his brother who was going around making the offers. Min. I don't know if we've seen Min yet. European and Middle Eastern hunters. Ooh. There's Dong Su, man. Are they trying? Are they going to? Oh, oh, interesting thought that is. <laughs> it's not a personal project. That's exactly what he's trying to do. He's trying to become the guild master. <laughs> the boss. I, it's still so funny. Yeah, we're just we're just melee fighting them. It's just raw strength. Yeah, right. Well, he could tell it was there. Wait, it has the stealth skill? 
That's not something I- Oh, assassin. And now a mage or something? Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly what it is. It's everything he's seen already. And these are like the hunters. It's forcing him to use everything he's used up to this point. Yeah, every single one of his perks, man. Yeah. Maybe it's testing to see where he's at. Okay. I think he talked about this a few episodes ago. Oh, it's good stuff. I like this. Who do we have here? Bake or Choi? Choi. Oh, I like that. Oh, he's geared up. The, gla the glasses push. Oh, we have a squad here. Cha. Uh, are we doing the island now? Oh, okay. We're actually oh, we're addressing a lot, maybe. Oh, nice armor. Yeah, yeah, I haven't even thought about this for Jinu. That's kind of cool. Oh! And it doesn't affect his mobility too much? Why wouldn't you then? Where's this red knight thing that we saw at the start? Is that the boss? Yeah, that's looking like a, a boss type door. Hey, let's find. Hey, hey, let's find out, then, man. Ooh, there's a presence in the room. Ooh, I like that. Some good animation in here, perhaps. Ooh. Oh yeah, we got the dagger out now. Oh, is it reminding him of the double dungeon? Ooh. On the same level, he says. Oh, yeah. I likes this. Egris the Blood Red, and his name is Bright Frickin' Red. He is in trouble. Let's go. Biggest challenge yet. A knight who defends an empty throne. Does he get his sword if he beats him, maybe? Oh, look at him! Okay, okay. Oh, he is so shook. Okay, gather information. Smashed. Okay, how do we think our way through this one? Dude, he's almost looking like his old self. The way he's getting, like, shook like this. We need to get down to... Oh my gosh. 40% or something, was it? We need that willpower. Ooh, that was sick, though. Of course, that's not going to do anything. But now you're in trouble. Jeez! That's some block. Okay, okay, that's handy. Yeah, but he's stronger. What advantage do we have? Do we have anything? There's no going back, so there has to be a way. One of these skills, maybe. A new skill. Yeah, let's go. Ooh. What if he drops his sword? Don't. Are we gonna melee it? Oh. He dropped all his weapons. Oh, dude. That's respect. That's big respect. Okay, well, uh, the chairman, we haven't seen him in a minute. We're really addressing a lot of the characters this episode. You're going to talk about Jinu, I wonder. Or Dong Su. Or oh, the, the raid. On the island? We're going to get mega cliffhangered after next episode, I'm sure. Interesting. Okay. Okay, maybe some reconnaissance. The third raid. The th oh, so this is the fourth? Ooh, okay. I'm really curious as to all the extra things going on with that. Oh! You can afford to get hit when it's not the sword, because it's not going to slice you up, but it's still going to hurt. 
Jesus Christ. This thing is gnarly. Ah, man. Come on, can we use stealth or something? Is that gonna help? Dash. Level 2 dash. Okay. Ooh, it's still dodged. And it just blocks. Maybe it was holding back? Wouldn't that be nuts? Here it is, Wu Pao! Jesus, it, it seems so one-sided still though. It's not backing down. Alright, here we go. Yeah, this is what we're here for. Oh yeah, I like that. Uh oh, what does this mean? Oh man. Dude, th this is giving the double dungeon. But how much Jinu got absolutely ragdolled. Oh, the, the, the face drag on the wall. Do we have to take his sword? That's the only thing I can think of right now. Go and pick up his sword. Like, Jinu must be close. Oh, he's in the throne. Is this symbolic? He was on the altar in the double dungeon. Does this mean anything? Don't pan away now. I, my head is, my brain is move, working. That That's interesting that we go to this. And then mother, why are we panning to the family right now? That's so cool. He's blocked it. Okay. Let's go, Jinu. Here we go. Bring the soundtrack in. Yeah, the chink in the armor. Oh, man. He's just pushing him back. Maybe he thought of his family. Helped him do this. Okay. Oh, yeah. Can I see some murderous intent, though? Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Is it Fatal Strike? Oh, that was sick. I loved that. See, there is something in there. It's not an empty, just shell of armor. Did you get it? Dude, okay. He looks like he did a pretty good job. Man. Short but sweet. Very sweet. He got the helmet. S rank. I love how that looks, man. Helping him get ready for the castle, man. Good, that's good stuff. I love the stats, man. Ruler's hand. Another stone. Does he have to use it now? Yeah, we're still going, maybe. What is it? Good luck? Wait, what does this mean? Well, wait, 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 wait. We're gonna get cliffhanger here, I can feel it. Survive as long as possible. All these transitions are killing me. Right, back to Choi. Cool looking people in here. Wonder if we're connecting these things on purpose here. Yeah. Maybe it's not a case of how many you uh, you defeat, it's how long you survive, maybe. What is that? It cancelled out his ability? Yeah, okay. Okay, now we're actually taking damage, damage. How long? You don't know. Oh, I see. Oh, uh oh, okay. Of course this happens. Why wouldn't that happen? Dash, dash, come on. It's gonna cut away. 
Don't cliffhanger me. Oh, there's only one episode left in this part, man. And not a single post credits, I believe, in this entire season thus far. I reckon we might get one next week, man. Okay, I, I am immensely satisfied with that. And we have some good direction going into the final episode of this part of season one. All right, another action-packed episode, which is really welcome. I think I might have enjoyed some of the moments in that fight with Egress the most out of any fight thus far. I just really enjoyed some of the choreography and just how quickly things were happening. Some of the little details they sprinkled into the fights, like how Jinu like changes the grip on his dagger. It was really good. It was really satisfying. I don't think there's too, too much to unpack from this. There was a lot of plot stuff. I think maybe I can read into some of the Juju Island and stuff a little bit but overall really good episode really excited for the part one finale next week so we're straight into the job change quest which i believe actually started at the end of the episode but this whole thing i imagine is part of leading jinu towards it and it's very like traditional like dungeon style you know like you can't use healing items you can't leave until you finish it very hardcore type stuff so there's all these knights and they're all using like different things that jinu has encountered up to this point and he does uh, reference the fact that the mage is the most difficult because uh, one of his uh, skills i believe it was vitality maybe or intellect something like that he hasn't leveled up as much so mages are a bit of a problem for him but i like that it makes him revisit everything that he's had to deal with up to this point and then we get to the end and we get egress knight commander egress the blood red the knight that guards an empty throne i believe actually that was the title of the episode a knight who defends an empty throne now that's a cool title and jinu says he's getting the same vibe from this as he got from the double dungeon you know the feeling was the same so perhaps this thing is on the same level as, as the god the statue in the double dungeon which i'm really excited for us to hopefully revisit somewhere down the track and if this thing was on that same level we know that jinu is getting significantly closer to dealing with that even though he calls his defeat of egress a fluke he was on par with it in terms of speed he was able to block a lot of the blows and tank a lot of damage but it's really exciting it just kind of shows that maybe his next encounter with the double dungeon should that ever happen again is going to be significantly different but lots of little things spring in between this whole situation with Jinu and I really enjoyed all of it so we have Jinho sitting down with his father and his brother now I believe Jinho's brother hasn't had an awakening right but I believe their father wants Jinho's brother to run the guild along with an S rank that they have been trying to recruit. He mentions that Char declined, which we did see a few episodes ago, and another S rank hunter, Min, who I don't believe we've seen. And I'm thinking maybe Min is one of the ones uh, who are going with Choi to the island, which I'll talk about soon as well. But then he was talking about recruiting some S rank hunters from overseas, like from the Middle East or European, and they even mentioned Dong Su's name as well, which is really interesting. What a shakeup it would be if they managed to recruit Dong Su and we know Dong Su is after Jinho and Jinu or maybe the more I think about it that it's referencing uh, Dong Su's actual alignment we know Dong Su was talking about an uh, overseas situation so maybe he's assigned to a guild overseas and that's why they say you know if they got someone overseas it would be similar to Dong Su but those are interesting things to think about Jinho's brother also warns him like look I know you're doing something with all these C ranks you know trying to get your reputation up but don't get in my way and obviously Jinho hasn't said anything about it because he's trying to keep Jinu's power a secret so that's all going on in the background right now. I love that we draw attention to that this episode. And then we also had Choi. He's got his squad together. They're in a helicopter. They're going to the islands. I, I thought this might be one of the things we didn't get in the next two episodes, but I'm so happy that we've addressed it. And I'm shocked that it's happening this quickly. I thought it might be another one of those things that was going to build up over time, like kind of like Dong Su and the Demon Castle. And you take a look at the squad that Choi has with him. There's Cha right at the front. I'm pretty sure I see Bayek back there. We know Choi was talking to Bake about this as well. Now we know there are only seven S ranks in the country, right? We know about Choi, Cha, and Baek and this Min character as well who could potentially be there. I don't know if Choi is taking people from other guilds. I do believe Baek is from another guild but I imagine we've got at least three or four S ranks and then I imagine the rest are A rank if we're going. There's so much like mystery and danger around Jeju Island that it makes sense that we're not taking anything under A rank. I'll just try and go over the scene with Wu talking to the chairman, Chairman Go I believe, about Choi's raid on the island because I think there might be things I can unpack from that. Okay so it seems that this whole island situation is very personal to Choi. He did have that dream last episode that he said is a recurring dream and it seems like someone died and he was even talking to Baek about someone who they potentially left there or who didn't make it through one of the other raids and Choi mentioned that that last one they did 
was the third raid on the island and i'm wondering if that was the very first scene we saw in the show back in episode one that third raid i might need to go back and look at that before next episode but it seems like Choi has been continuously talking about the island and, and keeping it out there in the public so that he can eventually get this mission approved by chairman go who did help sway the public's opinion a little bit but it seems like this is a big deal i think there are personal reasons for Choi and maybe bake as well because Choi said you know that last raid the third one it hasn't ended for him but i think keeping it in the public's eye it might be a different kind of agenda thing like maybe this is something we have to clear maybe if the hunters guild for example or maybe something to do with chairman go if they are the ones that approve this and they clear it maybe you could do something for their popularity or something for their guild something like that but like chairman go says Choi is being very diligent about this he says we could prod the enemy and see to what degree they respond so he's not just going in all guns blazing he's being very careful he just wants to assess the threat levels for now i wonder if that means they're just going to check out what's going on and then leave and maybe set up another operation in the future but he's being very smart about this Choi has become a very interesting character to me he was there in episode one as this really cool like we saw he could use flames we haven't really seen him do anything he's leading this expedition i'm pretty sure he's a good guy at this point i know there is something mysterious going on in this island but i'm pretty sure whatever it is it's something really personal to Choi, and i don't think it's anything malicious or anything like that but a very intriguing character I'm very interested in this whole situation. All right, and now the rest of Jinu's fight. I, I love the way that, that it played out. And I love that when Jinu's like, okay, this dagger is pretty useless uh, at this point, Egret also drops his sword and, and the rest of his weapons as well and it's really interesting because you think is Egret a monster because we are in a dungeon right and it had its name that was in red like signifying that it is a monster but it seemed to have some level of intelligence right the way when Jinu put his dagger away Egret was kind of like hmm interesting and the way it kind of stood over him before striking Jinu when he was on the throne made me think that's really interesting and even with the knights kind of having some characteristics of a lot of the other enemies that Jinu has fought and there is something inside the army it was, it was like a, a a goop or something you know maybe some sort of life essence or, or something i have absolutely no idea but it was interesting to think about but igra definitely had the most character you know out of any monster that we've seen at this point aside from uh, i guess the god in the double dungeon the big statue but a really interesting fight like i said before i loved a lot of the choreography a lot of the use of, of jinu's like dash murderous intent coming out and the way that it seems like you know there was literally no chance that that jinu was going to beat igra and if it were, was for maybe a different circumstance if he wasn't this level but i love how Jinu ends up on the throne and I was really starting to get into that like maybe because you know he ended up on the altar in the double dungeon and that led to this whole system thing activating I was like I wonder if something similar is going to happen and you could argue that maybe something did you know we pan straight to his sister and his mother right as Egrid is about to strike Jinu and then Jinu's back you know he's blocked the blow and it's it's the Jinu we've come to love you know he's not backing down he's perhaps just remembered his family why he's doing this why he can't give up maybe the system has made him remember these things maybe the system's pushing him but in this moment the dagger comes back out and he's stabbing into egrid's like chinks in the armor like at the actual goop that's in there or, or whatever is inside there and i love the little detail of egrid like taking jinu's dagger out of itself and jinu's like look the dagger doesn't change owners like that it's going to be right back in my inventory and he pulls it straight back out of his inventory and, and strikes again that was really cool i can't wait to see more use of that i love that it's kind of like a rip tied in Percy Jackson, you know, Percy's sword, it always comes back to his pocket. The sword, the dagger rather, always goes back into Jinu's inventory. That's a cool little detail to remember. But Jinu does win, and I spent a good portion of that fight thinking about how it was going to happen. You could argue that it was maybe a little bit anticlimactic, but there's definitely a point to this, right? With everything that happened afterwards, Egret is not the final boss situation of this whole job change quest. He gets a bunch of rewards, a bunch of gold, and the Crimson Knight's helmet, which is an S rank gear item. I didn't even talk about the other armor he got from the other knights before which really helped him in his fight with egress but that's really cool like he puts the armor on and it goes invisible and it doesn't inhibit him at all so it's just giving him stats you know which is dope and i guess it is protecting him as well and like i mentioned before he got the rune stone for the ruler's hand and he obviously he can crush the stone just like he got the stealth skill and he'll get this as well i'm really keen to see what that does and i'm thinking that might be his key to get out of the situation you know, with the cliffhanger that we've been left on and this instant teleportation stone he got as well uh, can only be used 
during this quest in this dungeon and it will take them outside of the dungeon and it can't be stored so he has to use it now to get out of this situation that he's in and he lost it you know during the fight so maybe he has to try and get that back and use that to escape or maybe something else will happen and then the job change quest actually starts right survive as long as possible against all of these knights you will earn advancement points that are required to be assigned a higher class now what does that mean does it change the class of what he is like is he like a fighter or like an assassin right now it's going to make him even bigger and then the system just says good luck you know like what what does this mean can he survive can he die here i, I don't think that's true because typically in like dungeons like this you know you survive for as long as possible but i imagine he's supposed to survive as long as possible before he uses the teleportation stone to leave and the job change quest is all about him getting enough points from this to become a different class right that's what the job change means that's what i'm assuming at this point i was kind of thinking like with all these portals opening and us continuously panning to choi and his team going to the island i was like maybe somehow maybe if jinu uses this stone he'll end up on the island or something and they'll intersect i just found that interesting that those two things were happening at the same time but we'll see i, I love to read into things too much that that are probably not going to happen at all but that's exciting to even think about and pretty much this is where we're at you know jinu lost the teleportation stone and, and you know he's about to get whacked by one of these knights and this has been a very common sort of cliffhanger jinu is about to get hit by something and then the next episode starts and he's already figured out a way to deal with it but it's really interesting to see does, does he continue to stay what does he get out of it how long does he stay for does he get out how does he get out that's what a cliffhanger is meant to do it's meant to make you ask a lot of questions they've done a good job of that so one more episode in part one of season one here i think it's a fair assumption to say we're going to get the conclusion of the job change quest for jinu and maybe a little bit of what's going on with, with the scouting for Choi and his team on jeju island it's all stuff that i'm really excited about even dong su's name was mentioned this episode we touched in with jinho and his family as well so pretty much everything that i had like on my list of main things has been touched on which is great really good episode for like the, the semi-finale next week which i'm really looking forward to i hope we don't get left on like some massive cliffhanger and i hope the wait isn't too long for the second part of season one so i'm going to leave this one here thank you all so much for watching if you enjoyed the video please leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more content like this and as always please continue to leave comments and feedback down below you know i always appreciate it we'll see you all in the next episode episode 12 the finale of part one season one of solo leveling.